So this right here is pretty much my Synology NAS. This is what I've been using for probably five plus years uh, at this point. I think it's maybe close to like seven or eight years to be honest, but I don't remember exactly. But this has been my go-to NAS. It served me really well. I think this is a great NAS. It worked great. I mean, I never really had any problems. Uh, every single update that I've done has been pretty flawless. And for the most part, you know, I, I pretty much got the chance to try quite a bit of different apps that are available through the package center. And, you know, I honestly say that there's a lot of good apps here. So a good one, for example, could be something like the Synology Drive. When I have some type of like, you know, uh, Dropbox like functionality or OneDrive functionality. There's this uh, Synology Drive option that you can pretty much use. You can store your data here. Uh, you can kind of use apps on your phones to kind of sync your data with uh, the drive. And this allows you to pretty much create your Synology into kind of a central hub where everybody stores their data. Uh, this is one app that I think is a great app that Synology has. Another app could be something like for example, the Active Backup for Business. This is another app that I personally have used in the past. This allows you to essentially back up the different types of systems. So you can back up your PC, your virtual machine, physical server, a file server. And I was using it in the past for uh, backing up my virtual machines with uh, VM or vSphere. I haven't used it in a little while though, but I, I still think that this is a really great backup software and don't let the name Backup for Business fool you. I mean, you can use this for personal, it's for your lab. And this is free, so you don't have to pay for this. Another great option, uh, I think personally, is the Plex server. So if I were to scroll down, this is another service that I use a lot, which is the Plex. And I think the fact that this is a very small form factor type device that just sits on your desk and it has a bunch of storage attached to it, uh, we can easily just install Plex and you know store all the media on the NAS and just play it from the NAS and I think this is like a really good media server uh, with the Plex on it and so as you can kind of see realize that the Synology is starting to offer a lot more than just a simple storage for your data right another service that I use often with Synology is the Docker service because I like to host certain type of services like Pi-hole for example on the NAS because the NAS is always on. I can have all of my devices connect directly to the Pi hole for, uh, you know, for, 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 for DNS essentially. And so I think having kind of this capability is great. And so like really the way I look at Synology is it's kind of like, you know, its own, you know, desktop operating system. You have your desktop, you have your apps that you can use and you pretty much have the capability to uh, extend this device to become a lot more than just storage. And so if you're like me and you're a heavy user, uh, at some point you realize that, you know, having only two cores and, and let's say even four gigs of RAM if I were to upgrade is not really enough because I'm looking to run quite a few different services, which I'm going to show you right now uh, on the NAS. So when I was looking at different alternatives, I pretty much kind of set my mind on TrueNAS for a couple of reasons. By the way, one thing I forgot to mention is that the current uh, version of the Synology, so the S412, does not support anymore the version 7 of the uh, Synology OS. And version 7 uh, of the Synology OS brings a bunch of new and improved features uh, compared to version 6. So if I go, for example, we can kind of see here that they have improved significantly like the way that you manage storage the user interface has significantly been improved and uh, redone pretty much from scratch you have a bunch of additional apps that are available to you such as like the photos apps for example uh, like this apps here uh, or this app i should say not apps uh, this app here is pretty much only available on dsm7 and this application here adds a lot more functionality than the current photos app that is available uh, on the Synology versions, uh, DSM version six. Also get things like, for example, faster RAID rebuilds, which I think is a great addition to have. You also get better, uh, much more functionality, or I should say better security when it comes to the way you can sign on uh, to the Synology itself. So the version seven of this Synology operating system makes a huge difference. And unfortunately with the current model number of Synology that I have, it is no longer supported. So I can never get anything higher than what my current version of the DSM is plus 
you know, maybe some security updates when they're available. And so for that reason, I decided to kind of go with something that's a bit more modern. You know, I chose TrueNAS for a couple of reasons. The main reason really why I chose TrueNAS is because if you really look at what TrueNAS is, it is essentially a virtualized server. It's basically a piece of software that runs on top of the hardware and it allows you to basically manage both the storage and the compute in that system. And so with that capability, uh, because it's running Linux, you also get additional services that are available to you outside of just being able to provide storage to your uh, other services. You get the ability to, for example, deploy virtual machines that are run on top of KVM. These virtual machines can be both Linux and Windows. You have the ability to run containers and container orchestration tools like Docker and uh, Kubernetes, for example. Uh, and so in this particular case, you could host containerized applications. And the great part about, you know, the TrueNAS operating system is that the, um, the deployment of containers and Kubernetes is essentially done through an automated process through the graphical user interface. You never actually have to go into the CLI and do anything, but if you wanted to, you definitely have the flexibility to do so. You can just click on shell and you'll be able to be directly into the CLI, or you can just SSH into it if you really wanted to, uh, and that could work as well. But the beauty of it is, is that because you have this kind of like application catalog where you can pretty much download and install any of these applications onto your TrueNAS, and these will essentially run with Kubernetes and with, for example, uh, Docker. So uh, just to give you some, just to give you like a, some example of like what that looks like. So if I do Docker PS, you can kind of see there's a bunch of different containers that are running, right? With Kubernetes and, and, and whatnot. So this, all of this, all of these containers that you're seeing here, all these nodes that you're seeing, everything has been deployed here, uh, was done automatically through TrueNAS GUI over here, right? So uh, when it comes to basically your like home services where it's like not labs, where you don't constantly want to tear it down and rebuild it and something that you want to keep long term. I think this type of solution is very ideal because it makes it easy to maintain and to do anything. If I wanted to, for example, update a container that's running, for example, here, I can pick any one of these containers like here, uh, like Kuma, for example, I can just click on the upgrade button. And then all I got to do is just confirm. And this will essentially upgrade that container for me. I don't have to go into it and do anything myself. So these type of like features uh, in a NAS I think are like really beneficial if you're going to be using it as a something that will act as some type of a service to your you know to your house to your residence if you will so this is not the final uh system or the final storage solution this is just a demo environment that i run to test certain things ultimately i think i'm definitely going to be going with TrueNAS because it is open source i'm going to be going with TrueNAS scale just for the record and i think i'm definitely going to be integrating it with my other services that i have currently like my proxmox environment uh, as well as basically any containers like PyHole or anything else that I decide to run. I will definitely document a lot more the kind of like my experience with the Synology, uh, sorry, with the TrueNAS system, because I'm going to be uh, essentially, I'm going to be building out my entire lab around this uh, solution. So I'll definitely have a lot to talk about and I'll basically make more videos around, around how I deploy my environment.